patient or the family often mention the difficulty that they have with the name heart failure. It's important to realize that the term goes back about 250 years and we haven't changed it since then. At the time that it was first uh, christened heart failure, there was very little that could have been done for the condition. And therefore, at that time, it was quite an appropriate term. However, things have moved on dramatically, and especially over the last 20 to 30 years, the treatment for heart failure has improved to the extent now that most people can live a good, healthy life with the condition. Heart failure affects approximately 2% of the Irish population. That would amount to somewhere in the region of 80,000 to 100,000 people in this country. The number of people with heart failure is increasing year by year, and this reflects both the good and the bad of modern day medicine and modern lifestyle. The good is that we're living longer, and therefore as we live longer, we're more likely to get conditions which are conditions of the elderly, such as heart failure. Secondly, we're looking after people far more effectively with heart attacks, and therefore people are surviving longer with damaged hearts, and therefore more likely to get heart failure. But the bad side to explain why heart failure is increasing is the lifestyle issues, which dominate in the Western world. And these are predominantly the sedentary lifestyle, the increasing problem with obesity, and the increasing prevalence of high blood pressure, which has been poorly managed, and diabetes. And when you put all of this together, the number of people with the heart failure problem in the country and in the Western world continues to increase. Heart failure is basically a problem with the efficiency of the heart. And if you look upon the heart as a muscle pump, and, and that in truth is all that it is, it has two specific actions. One is to pump blood effectively, and the next is to prime itself for the next pumping sequence. So if you look upon your heart as a, as a pump, it has to squeeze and then it has to relax. And there are two types of heart failure. One, is which, is, one which has a predominant problem with the pumping of the heart, and the other where there is a predominant problem with the priming of the heart. And this is an important distinction, and very early in the workup of your problem, your doctor will be trying to define whether your type of heart failure relates to the pumping of the heart or the priming of the heart. And in some conditions, or some types of heart failure, you'll have equal components or representations of both in your problem. As a result of these issues, or these problems with the pumping or the priming of the heart, you develop symptoms which reflect inefficient heart function. And these are predominantly symptoms of breathlessness and fatigue. Now, obviously, these symptoms are very common, uh, even in normal individuals. And the issue is to try and figure out who among us who complain of breathlessness and tiredness may be developing heart failure. And that will be an issue for your general practitioner to initiate or to try and figure out whether you could be one of those individuals that could be developing heart failure. Usually when these symptoms develop in people in middle age or later years, the suspicion for heart failure increases because it is, it is a disease that affects the middle-aged and older people. In such circumstances, your general practitioner will likely do an initial uh, test run to see whether you could be at risk for developing heart failure, for the development of heart failure. And that will usually be an ECG, a simple blood test called natriuretic peptide, often referred to as BNP or NT pro-BNP. And sometimes as a result of those two tests, you may need an ultrasound of the heart to assess how well your heart is pumping or relaxing between each pumping sequence. The last test, the echocardiogram as it's called, is the critical test in the definition of heart failure and without that test you cannot have the diagnosis formally made. The management itself will be broken down into advice regarding lifestyle and self-care which will usually be given to you by the heart failure nurse specialist and your own practice nurse and obviously there will be material available to you on websites and information booklets which will help you with this. In addition to that foundation of self-care, you will also be receiving medication which will be there to help a heart that isn't pumping effectively, or if you have the type of heart failure which relates to a priming problem, medication will be given to help that form of heart dysfunction as well. In addition, when your general practitioner consults the cardiologist or heart failure specialist, decision will be taken on any additional tests that may be needed to clarify the specific cause of the heart failure and also potentially to consider specific interventions such as interventions to improve the blood supply to your heart or to improve the function of the heart through pacemaker, through uses of pacemakers, etc. Very rarely do people need to go beyond that type of therapy to uh, rare interventions such as heart transplantation or some form of assist device to help the heart function. But again, this would be required in very few people.
once the, the diagnosis and initial treatment has been put in place, it's very important that you continue to look after yourself on a day-to-day -day basis because self-care is critical to maintaining well-being and heart failure. When you get the slightest indication that you may be running into a problem, it's important that you contact your general practitioner or someone involved with the general practice service to let them know quickly that you may be running into problems because speedy action at that stage often averts a problem developing to the stage that you might need to go to the emergency room. It is also important from, from time to time that your general practitioner links in with the specialists involved in heart failure care because we're fortunate to have emerging, and, uh, emerging therapies which improve the outlook further for this condition.